what are things that you should and should not do in a workplace? Workplace gossip. Every relationship is transactional. Please don't hide behind the fact that I'm introverted. I have to pretend to be somebody that I'm not. I feel like that's possible. Do I have to eat lunch with my colleagues? This is your daily catch up. Okay, hello everybody and congrats to everybody who has gone through the great resignation and found themselves at a new job. Hey, congrats. Well done la. And if this happens to be your first week, you will need to be answering these questions. Huh? <laughs> so there was this Reddit thread that's talking about if you're just starting a new job, know that the first week or so will be an emotional roller coaster. Fun. Nice. Don't forget your safety vest. Yeah, and so I thought it would be kind of interesting for us to kind of talk about <laughs> what are things that you should and should not do in a workplace. Right. Or okay. mistakes that you have made that have cost you your entire social life in your workplace. Right. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you've been working like for very long and then you realise you have no friends, this like makes sense. Like, okay. okay, so what we actually um, put up like an Instagram story to kind of ask people for things that they felt like were annoying work etiquettes. Or should I say non etiquette? Workplace etiquette. Because mm. the, the, there's no etiquette there. Okay, but anyway. And a lot of people actually say lunch. It's a big problem. So like must lunch together, need to chill colleagues for lunch. Then like colleagues assume you're okay to drive out for lunch because you have a car. Uh, like if you win, oh, get promotion, true. win lucky draw, all these, then you must treat. Mm. Yeah. But the general consensus of do I need to eat lunch with my colleagues? Not all the time, but I feel like it's important to do it once in a while. Like not to the point where like you completely are missing like... Okay, how much is a while? Once, once a, a week. week. Oh. Jinx. Jinx. Because I think like it's important not just for like you and your team, right? Like, I think for us, it depends on the context of your company. For us, we are like a team of like what thirty five to forty people. I feel like we can fit at least two thirds of the company on the dining table, mm. at least half. And I think it's good not just Honestly, for you. Honestly, if you squeeze, everyone can fit. It's just whether you want to. Cannot yeah. I was just thinking about it today. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all were damn packed. Now look at the, the two other rooms. Was, was, was because I, un, un, unless you are hanging out outside of work, which is unlikely, la, It's an opportunity for you guys to be talking about stuff that's not work related to distress a little bit, not just within your team but cross departments also. Like, I feel like I'm guilty of enforcing it. Like I I remember last time I started at, at a, I think maybe it's a part time place, and I made the mistake right because I I had social anxiety and in the past it was way worse than now right, and so I always very scared the lunchtime thing happen right then after that everybody just go then you just sit on there then after that you go yourself then after that you own self come back that kind of thing right then mm. I'm always very worried about people think I look damn pathetic like when I was younger you know <laughs> but no one cares the thing is that no yeah. one is even looking at you yeah. you know and that's why they never show you for lunch. So then um, I made the mistake of not going through that awkward period and I schedule in people to come and meet me at my new workplace for lunch on day one, day two, wow. day three. Okay, okay. Social yeah. so suicide, social suicide. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it, it, it comes from fear. I'm not trying to engineer that I'm popular. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to engineer the fact that your then family. you give me more time to make friends. Then after that, maybe I will ask them for lunch. Or after they know me, they will ask me for lunch. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But in the end, after one, two, three, and then on the fourth day, right, everybody just assumed that I go out for lunch with my friends. Yeah. Then I don't... Yeah. Yeah, there I, was I mean, sorry. So if you're hearing also. a beeping sound, right, that will occur consistently it's because there's like some construction yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So we will power through it. Okay, go. Yeah. It's because Bro, of I, total defense. We are participating. I also went through the same thing because when I first did part-time jobs, then I still young, right? Uh. Okay, I'm not that young, but young lah. Uh. Uh, <laughs> then, then awkward, right? So I pay say to eat lunch with people. Then mm. go smoke. Also, don't you like their group will chill you? Then I the first time they chill, right? I like oh no, sorry. I, it's like yeah. a re react yeah, reaction, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. So I straight away say no. Then after that, but right, inside you want. Inside, yeah, you, you kill me, please. The moment they turn around, I like, fuck, I should say yes, why I say no? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, it too late? is it too late to go and like, hey, I, I can join, guys? You know? <laughs> yeah. But they're a bit pathetic, so I never. Then in the end, right, six months there, right, oh I sit alone God. on a stool for my part-time job. Just one I mistake. I just by myself, yeah. Wow. Every time I go smoke, then they, the, the group of them are down there already. Then I just at the corner. This is what happened between <laughs> self, but we are together. <laughs> but I just on the other side of the staircase, you know? I okay. think, why don't you just take a cigarette and walk there? No, yeah. I am smoking there. <laughs> oh. But they are, the, they are three of them are standing on the other side right. of the staircase. No, I want to go and have a conversation Aww. with them. But you f*** right? But difficult. Uh, no, you like borrow lighter, like, borrow lighter. Yeah, I can have yeah, lighter. Yeah, yeah, but also How difficult. How was the day, bro? Mm. No, mm. I was reading a, a bit about this also. Like, whose responsibility is it, right, for, for the newcomer? 
like do I as a newcomer right do I have to go out of my way to say hello hello versus I wait for everyone else to like chill me the interesting is that after that right when I actually joined my first company to do an internship right my first day there right, the company I think like got 20 30 people right everybody together go buy lunch mm. Mm. everybody okay. come back all sit together then the first thing that you do on your first day is you must answer 10 fun facts yeah. about yourself. Then it's a constant exchange and then they really get you to break the f***ing ice immediately, you know? Mm. And then because they now have fu 10 fun facts about you, they are able to use that as an icebreaker to start other conversations with you also. Yeah. And I thought that was super, super effective. Yeah. But I think that the catch here, right, is that three months in, right, <laughs> they started mm. to get exhausting. Yeah. Yeah, because every single time it's the same thing over and over again. But then you cannot really break from that because it feels like you're breaking away from the culture of the company. Yeah, tradition. Right. Which, yeah, yeah, which was then something that when I look back on, I feel like a bit how? Where do you find the balance with that? Because mm. it was great as an opener, but then mm. we had a video call, I think John Paul was about to join, right? Then suddenly we found a commonality that was that we we, we both play Warzone. Then right, he asked me one time, hey, you want to play Warzone tonight? No? Then I was just like, hey, sorry, la, I got a squad already. And then he never asked me again. Yeah. Then every <laughs> night I just waiting, like, hey, don't bother ask me, you know? But why you never asked me back? It's been three right? years. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, but also, my head ran free. also, I want to say COVID Warzone was the best Warzone. I After agree. that, I, uh, lame, yeah, lame. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But uh, to answer some <laughs> question, I feel like, because it, it, it's very weird if it's the boss also, because it will feel like everyone's forced to do this, then mm. it's not really a culture thing. I think that's why it's important, right, when you start to build a team to identify who are some like culture, like, um, what do you call it? Like catalyst, uh, catalyst of culture. And they could be people like from mid-management, even junior people, but they are the more extroverted ones. They're the ones that are happy to just say hi to a stranger and then just ask random questions. Usually we'll have this few and then they are the ones that usually conduct these like interviews, uh, these interrogations. They create interrogation. the culture in the company. Yeah, exactly. when, when I first joined Gravity also, it was the same actually. We all sat together and had lunch together. Yeah, even though yeah. we had two tiny tables, everyone insists and squeeze. And I felt like that contributed largely to the company's culture. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We set up extra tables uh, just to sit yeah, next to exactly. each other. I just want to say there's a very uh, practical reason for people to go out together, buy lunch, come back together. Because if our lunch break is say 12 to 2, but you have one hour slot, right? If everyone starts taking their own time, uh, if you work together in a team or with cross department, people are starting and ending your lunch right. break at different times. Mm. So you actually have a wider gap of not working together. But mm. if everyone goes out to lunch and finish together, can start work at the same time again. Yeah. So mm. why I thought the Reddit thread was pretty interesting was because I kind of echo the sentiment. Like I think um, jumping on Shum's point a bit also, like I think as a new joiner to a company, I feel like for at least the first week, right, I need to purposefully put myself in more social situations to let people know that. I don't I I don't mind making friends. Yeah. But like eventually, like now sometimes if I don't join for lunch, right, then people know that okay, like is Denise is busy or Denise wants to rest. Mm. It's not that hey, how come like Denise always don't join for default. lunch? Mm. Yeah, yeah, correct. So then I think that first two weeks at least, first one or two weeks to like set yourself up to like this is my baseline. Yeah. Yeah. Then when you kind of fluctuate, then people understand it better and then you don't cause awkward social situations at work. Hello, more than 50% of you are not subscribed. Uh, please help us by taking a few little seconds to tickle that subscribe button and it will laugh. Coochie coochie coo. On to the episode. Yeah, I think my first day here was extra uh, anxiety inducing also because I was a COVID hire. So then we don't come to office. I work from home. Then I, I'm always on the oh, call. Oh, you're a COVID hire? Yeah. Then when I go on, on calls with people, right, I don't know who are they. I don't know their faces. Sometimes they don't turn on the camera. Then I get, do they like me or not? Do they like me from my voice? From my song, my voice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of your voice are not great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Like no, your voice has like a layer of something. It's Nasal. raspiness. Raspiness. <laughs> right, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. It's not yeah, yeah. bad. I'm just born this. No, it's just different. Damn. No, it's not there. Got a texture to There's it. There's a texture to it. Mm. But it's I wouldn't like say it's deep house. or it's rough or one. It's just not clear lah. Like clear. like gone plastic film haven't take out yet. <laughs> like you still on warranty. <laughs> no, but I agree with you. I was also a Kobe hire. <laughs> and the Huh? The really? Dude, no lah. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Uh, circuit breaker no, immediately you, I, after circuit breaker. Are you the, is she the round two one? Uh, maybe. maybe like the office yeah, yeah. have a another circuit breaker, right? Mm. Yeah. No, so the the first time I met Matt, <laughs> they were funny because I met him on webcam. I yeah. never seen him in real life before. And I also confused as, as to who is who in yeah, the yeah, company, yeah, yeah. right? Then I'm like, oh, first time meeting at AM. Okay, okay, okay. Must be serious. Right? Then we get on the call, right? <laughs> then you have it's just a black room. Then I see this guy, he slow rotate. <laughs> 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 and review, right? His camera this angle. Right? <laughs> 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 then he turn around, he wearing sunglasses in a dark room. Right? 
<laughs> that was okay. <laughs> I think going back to the lunch thing, right? I think mm. what is it, maybe it's not so much that you must have lunch with everybody, but I think what might be a little bit unhealthy is when the culture of your company is that we all have lunch together, but then slowly like people start forming like, like subgroups uh, or like mm. individual cliques that not just once in a while, but like for an extended period of time, they are doing their own thing separately from everybody else. Like yeah. yourself. That, no, like, I think for myself, it's okay. Like, Joy and I will just be on our computer watching yeah. TV. But then you all can watch us while we're watching also, and it's fine. But, like, I think, like, because <laughs> yeah, that's the most no. entertaining thing to do. <laughs> no, but sometimes they contribute also to our conversation. <laughs> like, they will hear, like, oh, oh he will burst yeah. out laughing because yeah, yeah, yeah. he sits directly beside the lunch table. And yeah, but people need listening. to know that Dan's hearing is <laughs> <laughs> amazing. <laughs> like, he can hear what you're whispering to the yeah. other colleagues from uh, across the office. <laughs> 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 I thought you were going to continue. He cannot <laughs> call out already. He cannot, he cannot. <laughs> oh my gosh, Shams, you're wearing your ring. Oh. Oh. She finally accepted that she's engaged. <laughs> no, the ring was being resized. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, the importance of having lunch with your colleagues. I've been following this TikToker, right? This local TikToker. I think she works for CNA. I think her name is Crystal Lim or whatever. Don't then, need to but, promote. Okay, so I don't give her credit. Okay, um, she talked about it's not only important <laughs> to know your financial capital, but also your social capital. Like your net worth uh, equals your net worth. So that's why you shouldn't wow. eat lunch alone. You should always try to like expand your social circle. Yeah. Like your colleagues are people that are very, very good at their work, ma. Like if a designer are very damn damn tight designer, very damn damn very damn damn tight editor, right? In the future you might need their help. In the future, like you might want to collaborate and do something together. So yeah. then you think it's a do you think it's a very transactional thing? I thought about that. But then again, right, everything is also transactional, ma. Every relationship as whether it's conscious or not, right, is transactional. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. So now I will monitor who you see with and like there I know, oh now you think that person up. But the question I, I do think that tying it back to the topic of today's episode, right? I think the question is how much effort is required to maintain these relationships, whether they are natural and authentic or not. And at what point is it considered maybe even rude? if you like isolate yourself too much or you ignore or you don't say socialize with your colleagues you know what i mean yeah. like if you are saying no to every after um after hours party that the that the office throws you know what i mean mm. like <laughs> how can you like can you just keep on saying like um oh i got other commitments i got other plans blah blah blah, blah. speaking from experience yeah, yeah so from memory from <laughs> like from memory you probably are the the example right. of like maybe not coming to many of the, the <laughs> I do. Work no I, I remember the first few weeks i'm here right i always ask you hey you going or tonight got the dinner then she like ah no la no la i got boxing i got something okay i have a reason <laughs> For both of us. Okay. I think right, a big Ooh. part of it might be Aww. might be down to that. No, not the date. Ah. <laughs> As in, I think it might be down to the fact that we both don't drink. So mm. then I think a lot of things happen, right? Where like after dinner, then there's a very awkward part where like everybody kind of floating around. We're not sure what's next on the program, mm. right? And then no like program, people, people start drinking and then the karaoke thing gets set up and then everyone yeah. just goes. So then if I'm not really interested in sing karaoke or like I don't drink, yeah. then it, I might feel very out of place there. Mm. So, yeah. okay, maybe maybe to, to frame this a bit, right? Or, or have some takeaways, right? Mm. Is If say somebody is new, right? And then they're like uncomfortable, awkward. I mean, we've all been there, right? Is there a way or... To, to help incorporate them into these activities so that they don't just like the first time right like you right the first time they just say no then after then they just mm. it's like a convenient way to just cop out right yeah yeah i think i actually enjoyed um me and pre's welcome party it was like way back when so pre and i joined about one week apart mm. uh, it's a editor that we used to have so she and not she and so she we, no what? No, we. Oh, we. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so what the <laughs> not she anymore? <laughs> so, so as it, we were having dinner together. Actually, Dan was there also that day. Hi. And then we had yeah. like a card game. Oh, yes. That we played. And then I think, I'm not sure whether it's because the team was also much smaller back then. And then it just felt like very intimate. And then we really getting to know each other, but yeah. in a very non-stressful situation where I think maybe like lunch with like 20, 30 people and then yeah. having to kind of feel the need to make yourself look interesting, right? Might mm. be quite pressurizing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but because it was like a dinner where we just kind of stayed back. And Do you all feel like this pressure is negative? The pressure to... To be, be interesting, interesting. Or the... Yeah. Do you all feel like perhaps this is what you need in this phase of your life? No, I think it's like... I think there's right kinds of pressure. Mm. And I also think that not everybody has the... Is, uh, is equipped with the skills to be able to perform in these kind of situations. Hence, like if you are like say you're the organizer, yeah. or if you are able to set up 
just something like a program or a, f- a, a separate focal point that 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 can kind of like yeah. make yeah. it easier for them to 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 then socialize. Yeah. I, I know a lot of companies they have buddy system. So like they usually if for a new hire right they will attach someone who's been there for at least two three years to just show them the ropes, give them a sense of the culture. Cause like mm-hmm. what, what I wanted to say is that I think if you're a new hire at a company, it's important to also get a sense of what the culture is like. But sometimes that's very difficult on your first day mm-hmm. to even know because you don't want to be the guy that comes in and goes, hey guys, so Friday we're drinking and then everyone will be like, whoa, this guy's a drinker. <laughs> yeah. But right. like to some companies it might be part of it, right? So I think it's important to like um, get a sense of that and then try to say yes. So like maybe clear your schedule your first week because you, you never know what might happen and yeah. like you yeah, might want to be able it open to... La, yeah. yeah, keeping your options open to say yes. Huh? No, wait, yeah. I, I want to I add something. I feel like there is a... There is a and, and this is just my perspective. Okay, I'm not saying it's right. I feel like to a certain extent, right, there is, it is very advantageous to assimilate quickly to the culture and to be accepted within the company people like to be accepted by the company's people not just by the company right you're accepted by a company when you pass the interview to be accepted by its people i feel like there's a lot of advantages in that mm. because it's not just about cross dynamic it's, uh, it's for example sometimes you are hired to trial a new system a new pilot a new something and at the end of the day if that doesn't work out then the correct thing to do for the company is that admit that the thing fa- has failed yeah then we trim as quickly mm. as possible. Mm. But you having friends that then know what you can do, what else you can do, people that enjoy working with you and want to be in the trenches with you, right, will then say, can my department can take them. Mm. Yeah, and I feel like, even for example, for us, when we, for example, have to let go of people for whatever reason, we also sit down and think about what are the cultural impacts to the company when we let go said person. Yep. How many chances said person should get? Mm. And I'll be very, very honest with you, culture pillars get the most chances. Sure. Right? People... That I'll be are out the very door so quick. <laughs> connected to you. Are actually, a culture pillar. Oh, yeah. Suddenly, job security. <laughs> 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 the hell, bar is like this. So every department in gravity has a culture pillar. So every everybody has. Oh, I guess it's not you. And then it <laughs> <laughs> has at least one. Has at least one culture <laughs> pillar. Oh, 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 it's so hard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I walk <wiped> straight halfway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and then within these culture pillars, there are also. Uh, they are not pillars, but they are important to the culture pillar. Y'all can imagine. So Jared. <laughs> 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 he, every other member. They, they are like the reason why the culture pillar might enjoy yeah, working they, here. They, and they yeah, for example, the culture pillar's best friend or yeah, the culture yeah. pillar's close inner circle. Yeah. So oh, those Ellison. people <laughs> also become very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, those people get the second amount most of chances. And in order to increase these things, and I'm not saying you stay you continue working in a place where you don't contribute, but because you have friends, then your friends protect you. I feel like that's toxic. Mm. That's not mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's the extra layer of consideration that one might have for you. Mm. And I also feel like in knowing that in workplaces, right, being socially connected and being accepted by its people, everybody knows that it's advantageous already. Mm. So I do think, right, as far as possible, when the company do plan things for the new people, especially to be part of something, right? Please don't tell. Please don't hide behind the fact that I'm introverted, mm. or I'm this, I'm that, or I just don't like. Oh, it's too much energy. Like you flip, ah, uh, you flip, ah. Uh, you just join the company for the first day. Everybody has their own friends and they're having a good time. And now they need to listen to you introduce yourself. You think everybody excited? Yes. That's how it to, should be. Eh? To a certain point, everybody has to carve out an amount of focus mm. to give you this yeah, attention. Yeah, yeah. A stranger. To try and get you into the company as quickly as possible, also. Yeah. Mm. And you, you need to respect that from the company mm. and give it your best and don't hide behind the fact that I am introverted. I don't I don't because people also don't want to listen to you introduce your probably not so interesting <laughs> life because you're at the ripe age of 23 how, how much life experience you, have, you know what I mean yeah. so yeah there was something I was thinking you about you have to so optimize for that yeah and I think when people go into new environments you can always be new you can always reinvent mm. yourself either change completely or add a couple of clicks uh, add a couple of traits that you want to have and I can tell you extroverts have m- more advantage than introverts yeah. in a sense la. Mm. so every workplace you go right try if you are not extroverted mm. try and add the extrovert but I think uh, what I've learned is not that I have to pretend to be somebody that I'm not in order to try to fit into this company's culture because then if I have to be that then maybe this is not the right fit for you lah. Yeah. but then I'm, actually like I said Pri who is 
pretty introverted. But you suddenly unlock some shit, I'll be free. Yeah. yeah. No, as in she's <laughs> as in I would say that she's quite an introvert, yeah, la, yeah, but then yeah. I think she make it a point to make herself present yes. and available at these kind of like gatherings. And yeah. so because she's there, right, then like it creates the opportunities for people to identify where she has these really funny one-liners. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And then I think then everybody also rally around her. La. It's not that we are trying to, and anybody is trying to exclude anybody. Mm. But if you are just not making yourself available, then it's on you. Law. It's yeah. true. She was the quietest person in the room and she was the most popular. Yeah, she had the loudest yeah. chant. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody, listen up. Please like this video if you feel like your company has good workplace culture. And if your answer is a no, comment down below. What's annoying? What's toxic? What's not giving? What's taking and robbing? Shh. <laughs> Back to the episode. Because I'm lazy also, right? Mm. And I think many people are. <laughs> I want to know what is the bare minimum. <laughs> so, and what I mean by that is like when you come into the office every morning, right? Is it a must to be like, hello, hello, hi, hi, everybody that you make eye contact with or you encounter on your way to your desk, right? Is there a need to do this? Okay, so I do the bare minimum. Every day with the same person and that's all. Yes! Yeah, I agree. (laughs) Shams is the one that wants to ask this question. I'm helping her ask. It's not me. No! (laughs) Okay, give you an example. (laughs) So like every morning, right, sometimes I come quite early, then like there's nobody, there's only Jackie, Mm. right? So he's he's always seated there. So... So then I always like, good morning for the first few weeks, right? Good morning. Then he'll be like, oh, okay, you need to cut his earpiece to say right. hello to me. Eh. Oh. Then I feel bad already. Then now, right, I'm nev- I stopped doing that already. I'm not sure if he feels like a bit hurt that I stopped doing that. But also, I think maybe he just wants his own space. Like, eh, never mind, like, don't no. need to see saying good morning. No. Mm. Jackie is actually a very social creature that doesn't know how to be social. Mm. <laughs> he, but he's hyper social. Mm. Yeah. What do you mean hyper social? He fucks in, he doesn't join us for lunch. Yeah, but he's. I can tell you, and, and this is my guess. Uh, ja- Jackie watches every episode together with his wife. So, uh, oh, hey, then Jackie, okay. join us for lunch, please. I do, it's so weird that I'm asking you from. Yeah, <laughs> Jackie, do you feel like no, he, he always feels like he cannot contribute to the conversation, so he do not go there. Oh. Yeah. No, no one spends time to I get to know him. To, to a certain extent. Oh, la, no, yeah. I feel bad. Join us. Join yeah. us. Join <laughs> us. I just want to say, for the longest time, right, we've had this like continuing ritual where like every time someone leaves the office, they will say bye, and the whole office says bye, or at least like people mm. close to them, right? And JP is the one that always sneaks out. Like, mm. you never know when he leaves because you just see him like he's in the lift already. He I'll shout on his behalf sometimes. Yeah, I like to purposely call people out. Like, hey! <laughs> Bye. Oh. <laughs> That's a bit aggressive. Like, yeah, I, re- I remember on the second, third day, right, when after Pri was eating at her table or something like that, then on the second, third day, I said, tomorrow what's your have to eat there. And then I, I said it in, like, in a half serious, half more serious mode. Just <laughs> like, I want to make sure it happens. The ones that don't, right, eventually underperforms. And I'm talking about pure performance metric yeah. eventually underperform or quit within 2-3 months yeah. if they are not succumbed by the company culture so tune. Yeah. and anyway, to answer your question right, I just say good morning team then whoever here here whoever never here never here I love I love the good morning last time when it was less of us right, I would shout it out and then make sure everybody answer back but now it's just like ah, <laughs> you all grow up really <laughs> you are old jaded people then you don't give a f- more so I'm the only one no, I also so I also know <laughs> to a certain extent a lot of people don't don't say good morning anymore because they come late. So then they don't want to come in gloriously and then like good, what a beautiful morning. Yeah, because you you woke up at nine, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was about to say I don't say good morning anymore, I say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning. Let's say we time skip to say you're a year into a company already, you are kind of mm. settled in. Do you have to be friends with everybody in your company? Like say it's a small company, like like 30 people or whatever, right? Do you think or or, or even like Friendly, friendly with everybody, or are some that like? Sorry, what is considered friendly? What's the benchmark? What's the minimum? Do you think you personally are friendly with everybody? Today? No, because I don't see a need to be. Yeah, unless we, because I I do believe that there are people in the office that I don't work directly with at all, and will never need to lah for the most part lah. So if that's the case, right, then there's, to me, it feels like there's no need to have that relationship with the person. I've always been curious. So like at lunchtime, right, it's probably when you're the most sociable and, and talkative, right? Is that a front? Is that a f- um, a false version of yourself? Mm, I think in any social set- setting, you are putting up one version of yourself, right? even yeah. on this show, right? So in real life also, I think it's the same. Mm. But yeah. is it difficult the amount of effort that you put? Like forcing us to choose between eating shit or drinking piss that kind That's not from me, that's Jared. <laughs> <laughs> you so la. I, I I guess what I'm trying to get at is why do you feel the need to do those things? Because I I've I've recognized that you've started to do that quite a bit, like over the last year or so. 
I always just thought it was fun for him. <laughs> he but rather dead than small talk. Hmm. Yeah, right? Mm. Actually, I don't know. Eh. I just thought that it's important that I'm present in those moments because of mm. the the benefits of, of that it will... Grew. So it's like what that she said at the start, is it? Yeah, something Can like I tell that. you why I think it's important that you are like that? And maybe you're not doing it consciously. I think it's because you are a very hard person to work with. In the sense whereby you are no nonsense, you call people out, and you don't... If you need something, you just say and you don't feel the need to smile. You know, shit like that. And I feel like those moments that you do at lunch are actually essential to your leadership. Because we doubt that, then I think you don't people don't see the other side of you. No, a long one, no, because I'm also here to learn, right? I also need to grow as a ma- like manager or whatever, like as a mm. co- colleague and as a <laughs> human being, right? Leader. So then I do see that like this is one of the aspects. I think I talk about this in another topic also about yeah. neglecting the social component. Mm. <laughs> and in work also that's important. Yeah. Mm. And that's something that I had to realize and then I need to figure out then how do I do it? Mm. Yeah. I, I noticed a switch flip when you started calling everyone boss. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I boss. Yes, yes, yes. Well, but that was the not that finesse version. Start, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. That was a non finesse version. Okay, okay. That was a, a more finesse version. Yeah. <laughs> no, he just is the past to where he go reservist. <laughs> so I feel like in within a company, whether as a leader or as a colleague, right, there is a lot to learn in not just being able to do your job. As but especially if you lead. It's about like let's say you do your job for your job capacity, right? Mm. It's the ability to not just ideate. But how to ideate and then translate that into writing. Mm. Then how, when you write it, how do you brief the person that's filming it and directing it? Mm. Then after that, how do you sell the idea upwards such that it's done? You know, all that makes your role. Correct. But many people see that your role would just be sitting down and thinking, as long as I can think, I should be good. Yeah. You see? Then that's the problem. And many many of our early conversations with John um, Paul was that he talked about how he feels like um, since we are already at the age of ideating stuff, there is no existing things that he could learn from here to level up. Mm. Which is a very real conversation we've had. Right? To to a certain extent, I also feel like, okay, maybe there's a lack of framework and all that stuff. Mm. But I also know that we are the veterans. There is no framework. Right. Yeah, like we we started the entire YouTube scene or like we were amongst the first few that started the YouTube scene like seven, eight years ago. And... So then if I sit and think about it and I reflect, okay, if you are you have nothing more to learn, you should be able to replicate the things that I've built or the things that you have built before. And and I would and if you cannot do that, then what is hindering your ability to be able to replicate those successes? Then we always blame climate on you know, last time Facebook algorithm was different and or whatnot. Mm. Yeah, but then you sit down and think about it and like, okay, no, you need to learn that the buying of your team is, is an important aspect of of leadership, ma. because at the end of the day, if your team don't dare talk to you, then that's a problem. That's a problem I'm dealing with also, right? Like, if your team don't dare talk to you, then that's a huge problem. If you are not developing yourself in trying to make a way whereby your team wants to problem solve with you and not just for you, then then that's something that you have yet to learn. Yeah, that, that was like a mm. bit of that. Like, I, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how I said it, but it was a conversation about me telling or helping John realize that the leadership aspect is in the job also, not just the content strategy aspect. Mm. Yeah. But that's because he manager. Ma. Uh, yeah la. But even not manager, there's many other aspects. Mm. So for example, if for exa- if there's a particular colleague here of which the competence you feel like is just not the way you want it and you go to somewhere else, you are changing this variable for other variables. Ma. Sorry. So for example, in this place, right, you like most of the thing, but you don't like um, let's say like for example the competence of one particular person right so your options are to change environment change environment right that's the option that's completely within your hand that means change job you are gambling with the rest of the variables also yeah. So right yeah you are changing the boss you are changing the the location the physical address <laughs> you're changing the premiums of the company the how that feels like on your resume you're changing the kind of content you create then maybe you swap it for that, a better colleague, colleague interaction mm. with that one colleague mm. So to me, everything you do, uh, then so now what do you actually need to learn in this season? Is if such a colleague is so valuable to the company, but not to me, how can I fix that? Because if he's not valuable to the company, he won't be here today. No, but I don't think it's just the... 
as in just the point of like feeling ah yeah people here not good enough and like I'm better mm-hmm. than them or that vibe right but is that is this not a reflection of what gets rewarded in this company and I don't align with that therefore I'm going somewhere that aligns with that and I trust myself to be adaptable enough mm. to enjoy all the other variables that are also changing yes but th- that's the gamble of the variables yeah uh, lame jokes that senior management says but you have to laugh because it's your boss <laughs> The senior management is I love. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wrote that as the most. <laughs> they put there Dan Lim. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never heard that one. It was really funny. Thanks, man. I feel like in certain circles, it's a very common and old joke. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it okay. Is. Oh, okay, okay. Nice. So this one, I want to understand, right? Because I don't see it too much in our culture. And I don't know whether it's very prevalent in Singaporean workplace culture. Mm-hmm. But coming before your boss and leaving after. Oh, Always yes. comes again. That's why you leave no. by twice. <laughs> 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 so like like is it more about punctuality or really just like it, okay, the most people like to use Japanese the uh, mm. workplace culture right. as, as an example, right? Japanese. Yeah. And I've heard it in some industries or some companies in Singapore. Mm. But I don't know, in terms of it being a form of etiquette or courtesy or whatever it may be, or respect for your your upper management or what, right? Yeah. What what are your takes on that? Because I don't believe in it. Lah. And I think like a lot of people have talked about this before mm. where if you are very efficient at your job, mm. yeah. then you should go off on time. In fact, if you can, you are that good that you finish early for the day, maybe even pangkang early or I mean, or if you are you got nothing else to rush off to, maybe stay, you can offer people a hand or help others or whatever, right? But that, that's still extra, ma, right? Yeah. Yeah. But leaving on time, like especially from a management perspective, is that something that, how do we, how do we want to approach this, right? Or what? I, I think in, in many offices, right, when like managers are inside a room, they have their own office space, which we don't, I think it's a privilege for management, but it's also, it's also to a certain extent for the team members to not always be within earshot of the person that runs the team slash company. Yeah. So I think for companies that don't have these rooms, I, I, I personally don't want this room because I want to hear the vibe, right? Um, I would... R- my preference would be la, if especially if you are new, haven't made your mark yet. At six o'clock, if you finish your job and gonna go, like you should ask your immediate team members. Like let them know that you're gonna go and ask, like, is there anything you need help with so that we can all live together? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel like it's I don't know why, but it I think it's just important your first day at least, but best your first week, you don't like purposely leave on time. I feel like twenty minutes after it's okay. Like it's just a, it's just an optics thing. But no, as in personally, I don't care. I think I feel like it's if, for example, if I hire someone to help Dan, and at six o'clock the person just leaves, then I ask Dan, how come you're still here? He says it's not done. Then it's like okay. Yeah. No, to, to I hire like, this person for what? To me, I w- I wouldn't stop anyone. Like, I wouldn't stop a yeah. a subordinate or a team member from like leaving on time. Subordinates, yeah. Yeah, that's why I was like your slave lah. Okay. I, I I definitely wouldn't stop them leaving on time, but I think it's more of just understanding the context, right? If we are rushing something together, or like we know ahead of time that this one, maybe you just have to like le- um stay back like maybe thirty minutes later because we're rushing something. Then I feel it's like knowing that you have hired someone that can be in the trenches with you mm. during the tough times. But obviously when we when we don't have work and I'm already chilling at like 6.15, like, yeah, go, go lah. Mm. Yeah. And then if you need to leave early on, like you need to leave on time on that day, then you must begin your farewell process earlier yeah, than yeah, 6 yeah. o'clock. So at 5.30, right, if you feel like you're almost going to finish your work already, right, then you straight ask the person. Like yeah, let the person know, hey, I need, leave at, I need to leave at right, 6 right, today. Right, right. I almost finished with this. Do you need anything else? Right. Yeah. I feel like there's a certain boss move, uh, which John Paul did, I think when he's at six o'clock and he, and he just, things are not done, he just said he gotta go. <laughs> he just go, something <laughs> like that one. And to a certain extent, I was, the first thing that came to my mind was, what the f***, right? Mm. But then the second thing was like, this guy is f***ing of himself, he must be damn good at what he do. <laughs> just to show. You're just making these things up in your head. Yeah, yeah. I think so. You're rushing to the bo- boxing club. No, no, I'm extremely extent, calculated yeah. about this. Mm. So the hours that I clock, right, I make sure that, I mean, obviously I won't count until soon, right? But I know that, for example, like after work, I'm still doing work and all this kind of shit, right? But the in terms of work-life balance, to me, is that regulation of my own schedule. Mm. And so, like, right now, I mean, okay, to overshare, I have 
Another commitment that takes up quite a good block of my time, what? and that one is very fixed. Who my training? Oh. Is it his yeah. oh. on his hand? But don't you have you always been training? No, because I only started like last year. But then the schedule will adjust on my. So knowing that right, and knowing the class schedule, I need to readjust everything. So right. I'll plan tun tun and make sure that everything is sweet sweet already. Then after that, like for example, if I need to. If I know that, okay, honestly, after that, right, ten thirty, I go back. I'm gonna do another half an hour, one hour work. Mm. Then I factor that in also. Right. But either way, I won't leave everything. Yeah, like, I'm not complaining. Untouched. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. <laughs> but I'm saying, saying that, that it's very calculated. Yeah, I'm saying yeah. that there is a power move in that. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I, I, I just would say that, like, if I and, and I'm not, but if I were to change job now and move to a different company, my first week or day, even if people tell me go, this is your, this is your three years that you're gonna be right, I will still stay like one hour pass. I'm supposed yeah. to leave. One hour? Oh, like 30 minutes. Like yeah. I think 30 minutes is my... No, la, like... I, I, then like, off the <laughs> central icon and you just sit down there. Like, I just cannot. I think it's just in, been ingrained in me. I think because uh. of my first job, my first internship, like, <laughs> everyone's told me that make sure you're not the first one to leave. Yeah. If you last one, yeah, leave, everybody you everybody all stay. Everybody. Yeah, but you must yeah. see culture. I remember I had this part-time job, right? Mm. But it was like manual labor one. I was like sticking labels on something oh. in some DHL factory, right? Mm. Then I wanted to finish the pallet because it's therapeutic. It's like mm. sick, chap, sick, chap, then got conveyor belt on it. It's very therapeutic. And I really wanted to finish this pallet so that I can start on a new pallet as opposed to a half pallet tomorrow. Yeah. So I was working on so at we finished at six and at five like forty. Around me everybody go and see so. Yeah, I mean uh. mostly it's foreign workers la, so they go and wash hands. Yeah. So then I'm, I'm like, never mind. I mean, maybe y'all need to take bus go very fast. Some of y'all need to go yeah. back to JB. But you know I stay in Changi and this thing is in Changi. Like I really am in no rush. So I just really wanted to finish it. And then one of the girl come and say, like, go and wash your hand now. Le- le- because of you, you're going to make all of us stay back. Oh. Like, oh. she, was, she was not even nice about it. She was yeah. mean. Yeah, like, oh. angry at you. I got another one. Oh. So I saw uh, one, one other comment, but it wasn't exactly this, right? But it's actually about workplace gossip. And it's not so much about you starting the gossip. It's more of if you are at the receiving end. Yeah. yeah. Like if one of your colleagues just suddenly start gossiping about, say, another colleague or a manager mm. or boss or, or anybody else, right? How do you take that? What do you do with it? Yeah. Do you try to confront this person about stopping the gossip, knowing that this person might continue to spread it? Mm. Or you just keep quiet because it's none of your business? What do you do? We actually wrote a list of stuff to prepare today and gossip was like bolded because like that's something I feel so strongly about. Mm. Um, I feel like, why well, it's so strange for me because I'm in a position where I kind of represent seniors management. So like no one tells me stuff anymore. Um, because they scared our powder John. Uh, but I think back in the day when they used to, right, I really used to try to be the mediator where that toxic, yeah. there were several options. One is that if whatever I'm hearing from them, I actually am in a position to actually do something, like I can actually help their situation, I would try to tell them that this is what I'll do and this is how I'll Is there I'll a specific try. example of this? Um, maybe like someone just feels like they can't communicate with like another colleague, for example, or like maybe there's like some misunderstanding and then they're gossiping and they're complaining. And actually I feel like maybe I am actually close to the person that you are complaining about. I am, I maybe know that based on their personality, this is really blown out of proportion. Maybe I can speak on their behalf. Then that's somewhere that I can try and mediate and like, like solve the problem. La. So I know if it's a problem that I can solve, I will, I will do that. If they just need a listening ear, then I'll just be a listening ear. But more often than not, I try to let them know that or try to identify that are they complaining about the situation with a solution in mind or are they going down a very toxic rabbit hole where they really want to complain and they're trying to get people on their side. Because there's sometimes this situation also where I think maybe they're in the process of wanting to leave and they're trying to like go... This is I'm. It's just not me that realizes this problem. Like, let me try and rally people to like feel this mm. problem with me. Right. So you really want to look at the intent of the gossip, and yeah. then from there see if there's like hope for yeah. saving yeah. a situation or what uh, Correcting I've, something. I've even exactly. observed where like <coughs> when the strength of the clique, uh, mm. the bond not as strong anymore, right? Then it's really throwing shit on the wall and seeing what sticks. Uh, trying to find a common enemy. Correct. Because the, 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 like, I think I mentioned this before, like when I was part of like that different clique that op- like kind of fell out with John for a moment and then I kind of found my way back, right? Like oh. the, the main issue was that because we just kept ranting and talking about negative experiences and then it just piles on top of each other, that became so far from what reality was. And but because we just keep hanging out with each other, lunchtime we're just hanging out, it's only just us for like two, three months, right? And we're so far from reality that we become really warped. 
And so that's why whenever I notice these things happening, right, I know confirmed gossip is happening. I know they're far from reality. And I know that there's toxicity like brewing there. And it, it's so hard to navigate because you can't just go and say, hey guys, yeah. like stop it. Because like it's not our place or so. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And it feels weird like in a social, right? Like you it's like a better than tell situation. No, the, yeah. the fear is that oh, this guy do not part of this common mind, this hive mindset or whatever, right? Then we yeah. just cut him off. Oh? Then we just gossip mm. amongst ourselves. Then yeah. now you are in an even worse position. Because you are now isolated from it, you cannot, you don't know what's happening, yeah. you're cut off, and then you cannot, it's yeah. even harder for you to do anything about it. Yeah. yeah. And I think for me also, and I think John Paul has heard a lot of this from me that like sometimes I'm unhappy with somebody's work or that I feel like this could have, could have been done so much more differently. And I think my tone comes across quite aggressive. As in, a lot of times it's, it's things that I feel like I cannot fix also. Mm. Yeah. Then, I'm sharing my grievances, then is that gossiping? No. Or at what point then does it cross into gossiping and I've gone too far? Yeah, because there have been moments where like I speak to John Paul and then he does say like, oh, so like, uh, like okay, like this one you keep to yourself or like you like try, huh, try, not, to, try not to mention this to other people because essentially it's gossip. Right. right. Like he right. will highlight it to me. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I, I get what you're talking about. Yeah. I, I think I, I can remember, recall some of the examples, but yeah. I think sometimes where I identify it as gossip, right? Mm. Is where you bring it up as a problem, but you have not tried to troubleshoot it. Yep. Or you don't where you want actually to. Have to yeah, yeah. Where you actually have the capabilities to, mm. but instead it feels like the moment it happens, you it's reactionary almost that you right. are vocalizing something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Then that feels like gossip. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think that there's, there's always a pattern and like it's about like whether you are complaining or whether you are troubleshooting and it's like whether you are always talking in conversation about people or whether it's about like systems and concepts right mm. and i think whenever there's something wrong with say someone's performance it could be a systematic issue or it could be something that could be improved either with the individual or the entire process and you know that it's not gossip because someone is going okay this has happened but i think this is how we can either fix it or i don't know how to fix it but let's try and work something out if they are complaining to you. Mm. And I think that's a clear indication of, okay, this is a fruitful and productive conversation. Does it always have to be productive though? Sometimes I just want like to engage in harm harmless complaints. Is there such a thing? Like, not you just want to rent to a I friend. Just want to rent. Oh my God, this like person does day, this, this. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not saying that I don't like this friend or I, I don't, you know, I try to get your buy-in into my story. No, like, I just want to complain. I feel yeah. it's quite subjective, but I think you can tell from the tone of voice or the intent. Why? Like uh, why do people just like to complain? I I never, I don't understand the impulse thing. Yeah, I think that's a bit yeah. risky in a mm. workplace setting since yeah. we are we're on that, right? Yeah, but yeah. it's also it unavoidable it though. As much. No, but as where is this impulse coming from? Yeah. Like, nobody wakes up one thing to be unhappy, ma, right? No, I think it's frustration from maybe like, like say if you feel like your colleague is not meeting a certain standard. Yeah. And then that. No, I understand. Your work, right? I understand you want to complain about it, but the impulse to say I just want to complain, yeah, yeah, I don't feel that anything. That part I also don't get. And yeah. I think for people, right, like before we move towards mm. that, right, is that on top of like to build on what Dan is saying, if you want to talk about something or you feel a need to raise it up, but you're not sure whether it's gossip, I think the the the, the one thing you can check off to make sure that this is not gossip in some sense, lah, is make sure you are. Coming with a solution. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But what Bring if I just don't have a solution? Like I genuinely I try already. You're looking for a solution. I've tried this, I've tried this. Say that. Okay. Say that you have tried. Yeah. And yeah. then you cannot figure it out. That's why you are bringing it up. Yeah. Then I think that helps. It buffers it because I understand now you are articulating your intention with yeah. raising it up. Yeah. Because I think a lot of the times where maybe Dan would relate to this, right? Where it gets so extreme that it becomes inside jokes, right? That when something happens, we just make a reference to this. Yeah. Like this person or whatever. Yeah. And then <laughs> At that point, it's clearly a recurring problem. What's happening, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and then... Like, no, it's a recurring problem meeting. with no solution. And then yeah. what? Yeah. No, no, it, it's exactly that. And like these are <laughs> undercurrents that you, you don't see, right? And it only shows up as like all of a sudden sourness or bitterness, yeah. right? Towards the very end of like, say, someone's tenure in the company. And it becomes like a surprise. Like, whoa, we didn't like... Didn't even where realize is this that, coming yeah, from? Where, where yeah. is this coming from? And there were avenues because like as scary as maybe John might be in your first week or so, right? At the end of the day, I do think that he is, or at least myself, approachable enough to like listen to any... <laughs> or most of the team... He approachable, man? Uh, approachable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't no, speak for him. He's more <laughs> approachable he's than the least John. approachable. He's not here in the morning as well. <laughs> Nobody to approach. <laughs> hey, the Nisha have more approachable, okay? Thank you. Uh, he's working out. He's like 10 to 5. Yeah. Mm. Out of no, the, out of the three, three of them here, the most approachable I think is Dan. Thank you. No, really. You disagree? 
I think I think <laughs> what now we hey, disagree disagree. I, oh. I just want to know am I the most unapproachable across all metrics? Yes, yes. Ah, really? Huh? Yeah. Okay, who's the approachable to John Paul? Yeah, John yeah, Paul. Yeah, John Paul. I I, so. Even yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to talk to him. John Paul is a really emotional and soft man. I don't want to stand for your saying bad things about him. No, but so are we. So are we. Tell you I was I didn't even realize the hardship. You need work on it. You know that in the past, I thought you were gonna pinch your chicks. I'm like, oh my god, I have you gotten this far. You know in the fertility episode, Pat did this and then you didn't read it at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Towards the end, so it's actually you problem. I think because sometimes I talk to John Paul, so like maybe just so happen we exit the gates together. Then I have like some things that I. Let me pent up frustration, then I no choice. Like, this, he's the only other person. In the ah, so you gossip to him so and then? Not gossip. <laughs> I just talk to him about it. Oh no, but he's very good at like telling me, reminding me that I'm gossiping or oh. what is gossip and what's not gossip. Yeah, actually, yeah. John Paul has stopped a lot of I'm gossip. I'm quite in the surprised. Office. That's what we are realizing yeah. here. Wow. Wow. He does <laughs> Cultural pillar. He doesn't <laughs> pick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel very used in those moments, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you feel dirty. I'm not waiting for a cab, eh. I, I said, <laughs> I need my moment alone standing outside. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually trying to get away from you. <laughs> no, I see my run. <laughs> no, but oh, there's also this line, right, that I don't, I'm very, I get very confused about. Like, there's mm. this, every time someone gossip, right, I say, hey, don't gossip. But they always tell me this, uh, hey, it's not gossip, it's facts. Only then, stupid people say it, no, I give it. <laughs> Can give an example of facts. Example, someone in the office like uh doesn't maybe doesn't perform to your expectation, right? Then you just like, oh this person never do this, never do that. Then I say, ah, ah yeah, it's just like just uh, as in That's gossip. You yeah. say that's no, but gossip. But you say for what? That's where it becomes gossip. You say for but what? But normally you don't ask that one, ma, right? Ask you what? Mean? Like ask you don't what? ask your friend, like you stop them like, so what are you complaining about? Like why what's the purpose of this complaint? Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think it's, stop that. it's, it's on you. Like there are times where we will all lick and complain. Mm. Then the to some extent that's human nature. And the job of the people around you to be honest is to let you vent that. Mm. Mm. But it's on you. It's not how you stop people. Don't worry about that. It's on you yourself. If said person's work with you is not to the level of your expectation, is there a pattern you can fix with that person? No, but or what you say, Liao, no fix. Do you want to tell that person's uh, boss, or can you adjust your work style? Yep. So if there is one person that I think they are thinking about, then I've also talked about why I think such person has very strong merits, but they don't do as well in in communication with you. So to a certain extent, I feel like if you are not willing to address it, or you're not willing to escalate it, or you don't want to tell that person's boss, or you don't want to tell John, right? You just really want to talk about it, right? Mm. And then repeat it, but you don't want to fix it. Then it's clearly toxic, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If yeah. it's not repeating, I just want to say it one time, and that's it. So I oh, feel that's okay. fine. Oh, that's fine. I just I like that's so fine. I feel hurt. Honestly, I, I feel like that's facts. <laughs> that's facts because it's not targeted at the person. Because I feel like it gets toxic when the it's like something. if we go back to Dan's example, right? Of when when the toxic loop happened, right? It was a matter of, if I say, hey, Dan, can you help me send a quotation? Okay, well, I mean, it, I'm perfectly within my rights to ask mm-hmm. Dan to help me send a quotation. But when he goes into the toxic loop, will be like, he's f- lazy, he don't want to send his own quotation. You know mm. what I mean? Like, cannot do mm. anything right. So once it becomes like that and tied to a person and not the task, yeah. then to me, that's really toxic. Yeah. And you are an, an amalgamation of everything that you're surrounded by. Yeah, and I was just telling, like, like, like Sherms before this, I, I really believe that you you are the sum or the or the average of the people you hang out with. Not the closest five, but the people you hang out with. Yeah. Yeah. And like don't seek comfort in complaining <laughs> circles. Because at the end of the day, if that's what bonds this group, no one is going to say, I'm going to get a company funder, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna make a better workplace and I'm gonna hire all of you and all of you are gonna be bosses in my company. Mm. No. At the end of the day, you break up this whole shit, you stir up shit with other people's relationship. Yeah, y'all may still all quit. And then y'all all go to a place where it may not be as desirable because you are trying to quit on a timeline. And then you derail your career because you wanted to keep that, yep. that bond with a toxic circle. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not. This one I'm not speaking from experience. Lies from like assumptions, you know. Yeah. There was this famous quote because it reminded me of this one. The Eleanor Roosevelt. 
She Ooh, said, "A girl." Is that the like the president's wife? Wife of yeah. oh really? Yeah, yeah. frankly, she said, "Great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Small minds discuss people." Yeah. Mm. That's it. So who do you want? Who do you find yourself? Who do you surround yourself with? Or when you're in the circle, what do you notice they talk about? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so thank you very much for watching today's episode. Turns out we have AJM quite often nowadays. <laughs> no, uh, you guys, stop letting me start. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> like, share, subscribe so we can say more things to John. Mm. <laughs> it's robbing. Eh. It's, it's robbing. robbing. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> because I serve cunt. It just happened today. <laughs> Was this coin today? No, I want to go. So last week he learned is giving. Yeah, no, no lah, I know so it's so giving. Bro, guess what? I no, serve cunt. I, I know <laughs> I serve cunt. I learned serve cunt really? first. Serving cunt, leaving no crimes. Wait, you what? bought it then. <laughs>